So in doing these techniques, though, you have to be careful to avoid the false awakening. Because as the dream fades, you are thinking, I'm about to wake up. Which makes it likely that you will dream about what you expect is about to happen. And if you don't, if you're not reminding yourself in exactly the way if, if um, when you're talking on the telephone, if you get a number from information, you have to repeat it to yourself continuously or you forget it. Right? You've got to say, this is a dream, this is a dream. Otherwise, the moment that you seem to wake up, you believe it. Just as you believed you were really awake this morning when you, quote, woke up. <laughs> so... Uh, those two techniques, but the stabilizing of, of lucid dreams by spinning or hand rubbing, are important. Uh, then uh, we also have to stabilize our lucidity uh, by the rehearsal of the phrases, an aphorism, such as saying, This is all a dream, it is all in my mind, I can do what I wish to do. And you can uh, make an aphorism uh, to remind you of what you want to be doing with your lucid dream. Um, after some practice with lucid dreaming, this no longer becomes necessary. At first, lucid dreaming is like knowing that you have hands. To know that I have a hand, at first I have to have it right in front of me. It sort of gets in the way, but if I put it over here, I forget about it. So I've said, I have a hand. Yes, I have a hand. After practice, you can have the hands in the background and you don't forget. But, but first you have to say this to yourself. Okay. So now I'd like to talk a little bit about dream control. Let's say you decide you now are in a lucid dream. And I think, I'd like to just walk through this wall. Why not? It's a dream. So why? Solid. Why? Because all of my experience of walls is that walls are solid. So it is acting like my expectation of how a wall acts. Now, if think about it, no, my, I am still being held up by the solid earth. So I must have an unconscious expectation, at least that this dream stuff is just as solid as this is. And therefore a wall should be solid, like this wall is. So I look at it, it looks like a barrier. So if I wish to go through the wall, I have to change the way I look at it. So, for example, I could say to myself, physicists know that what seems to be solid matter is mostly space. So I'll just let the uh, so-called atoms in my dream hand pass through the atoms in my wall. So thinking that way, the wall now feels a little porous. Yeah, and as soon as I feel that it is a little porous, it becomes more porous, and then the hand goes right through it. So, so that's one example of how I could go through the wall, even though at first it felt solid. Another one is very simple. I turn my back to it. And what happens to a dream wall when we turn our back to it? There's nothing there. And you can go through it. So, you see there, uh, that's an example of how you have to adjust your way of thinking about the world. Because all of our experience, almost all of it, comes from the waking world about how the world works there. And in lucid dreaming, we have to learn to modify our model of the world uh, to fit how the lucid dream actually works. So, uh, the first problems that we have in dream control are mostly problems of our attempting to do things that our unconscious mind tell us are impossible. So, um, if, for example, you would like to talk to some particular individual in your lucid dream. Let's say I would like to uh, uh, interview uh, Tchaikovsky. Then, I don't want to say he's simply going to appear here in front of me. But instead, I think, I'll bet he'll walk in that door any moment. And here he comes. You see, because in our experience, we never see people suddenly disappearing out of nothing. We see them coming through a door, and therefore it's easier to expect it to happen then. And so you, you make use of your expectations about how the world works. So, uh, and we believe that if you truly expect that Tchaikovsky will walk in the door, he will. This is very clear in regard to our nightmares. Uh, if you can think of it from your experience, 
you will know that in nightmares, that let's say you're running away from someone and you're hiding somewhere. And then you have the thought, perhaps he'll find me here too. And the moment you think that, he does. And it's not magic, it's simply expectation. This afternoon, we will talk about the theory behind how our minds are modified by expectation and motivation. For now, for the practical application, just remember that it's best in the lucid dream to make things go in some way that's consistent with most of your experience. Not to try to do things in a way that would be impossible utterly in regard to your waking life. See, for example, flying is not utterly impossible. We have the experience we can, we can jump into the air. Now, if for some reason we were never able to jump at all, then it would be difficult for us to fly in dreams. But it's not so hard because we have a, something in that direction of that experience. So we may have some problems with that there, yes? Okay. Uh, I'm glad you brought up that question because I was just going to talk about dream figures. For example, if Stephen right now were to realize he were dreaming, I would be more inclined to think that that the dream figure representing Lynn in the back of the room is yep. somehow really there because I know her than I would be people that I don't know very well or have never seen. Because Lynn is somehow more real to me, and if I dream about her, I think of the Lynn I know and think that that must be her. But if you think about this, suppose um, if this were a dream, and I pick up this piece of dream stuff, why would we suppose that inside this book was already dream letters? We know that we have a brain inside our heads. We know that you know it has great complexities and that, that the whole nervous system, everything that's underneath the surface of our skin is the mechanism that determines our perception. I assume I have a brain and I assume you have a brain. We don't know it directly. It's just an assumption that is generally appears to be correct in this world. But so here we are in a lucid dream, and we've got that same expectation that it might be true. But uh, I doubt that my dream body has a dream brain and dream thoughts in it. Because then we have to say we have a dream brain apart from the physical brain. And then we have to also explain how it is that people come to no harm if they remove their dream head. But all I would Yes, okay. Uh, but that I regard as, infer- as evidence for information transfer. That doesn't prove she was in your dream. But there's a difference. 